lady and I are going to talk to the church. I'm going to ask if you have any questions um, to hold them to after service. If you want to ask us any questions. And after after opening the door to the church, First Lady will spend a few moments. Um, uh, if anyone wants a Bible or a T-shirt or uh, want to finalize their payments for the trip, then we'll hand it over to Minister Craft. Right. Amen. Amen. First Lady. This is going to replace our uh, Sunday ser ser sermon, if you will, um, entitled Real Talk. Uh, in the light. Um, we just want to talk so you can gain a better understanding of us as a church, what we believe in, um, as we move forward. I think it's vital for you to know so that you know what you're part of and what we believe in. Um, each ministry is built differently. Some people believe in different things. I think that we shouldn't allow that to come, uh, call us not to come together as long as we believe in Jesus Christ. But Amen. it's Amen. equally Amen. important to know what you're a part of. All right? Amen. So this will be entitled Real Talk, and we're just going to talk for a few moments. Uh, we're going to have some scriptures for you all to follow along with, and afterwards, as mentioned, if you have some questions, uh, feel free to come to me so that you can gain better understanding. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you right now yes, for your Lord. congregation. Yes, thank you for your people. Yes, we pray, dear Lord, that you'll continue to help us to know what it means to walk with you, to know what it means to walk with each other, yes, to know what it means to build a soul and to build a family under your precious blood. Yes. Father, let us focus more in on the freedom that we've received by receiving Jesus as a personal Savior more than religion. Yes. Yes, We've come, God, to grow with you, yes. to, to be corrected by you when you need to correct us, and to be encouraged by you when we need to be encouraged. Yes. Father, help us to be, anoint us, anoint First Lady and I as we talk, yes. that uh, the words that are shared in the spirit that is released would be of you and would bring for healing, deliverance, and protection in all that we do and say. Yes. Give your name praise. Glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So for those of you that are taking notes, our topic today will be focused on the real family and the real church. I'm going to ask that you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. The first area that we want to cover uh, would be church experiences versus a relationship with God. We'll read um, Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through five. First lady, I want to thank you because I'm using the face that I acknowledge, but you know all the great work that you do behind the scenes. So I take time to thank you. All the Avoid such men as these. You know, I 
think it's important for us to uh, build our relationship with God versus the church experiences that we often encounter. Um, it speaks here about having a form of godliness. But what good is the form of godliness if you deny the power that comes? All right? Um, God only anoints who he recognizes. Okay? And a lot of times, church experiences will try to cause us to be something or someone that we're not. God says, who is this? I will only anoint who I recognize. I don't recognize you. Um, church has tried to mold you into something that you're not. So therefore, you're not as happy as you would be. Um, they'll try to teach you how to talk or how to walk. When God is saying, I'm trying to build this relationship with you, and I will never compare you to anyone else. I want you to know who you are in your own skin. I want you to experience this relationship with me versus the expectations or the experiences that you've had with church. And we've all had church experiences. All of them haven't been bad. Amen. Um, but in order to flow with God, we have to realize that he's always moving. He's always speaking. The Bible is very good. It's perfect. It's what we need. But we also need revelation from God to know what he's saying in our lives, not only what he has said. We need the word of God to be alive in our lives uh, as we build this relationship with God. Right. So, very important to build relationship. Second point, God doesn't love you who you're trying to be. He loves you for who you are. Amen? Amen. I think this is vital because oftentimes people have encouraged people to be something that they're not. Mark chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. So as it relates to soul redeeming ministries, we want you to um, begin to ask God more and more, what does he want to do as a people? Not necessarily a church experience. Uh, when you come through the doors, we want to know, God, what are you saying to me? Um, you created me. You made me. And I want to please you. But in order for me to please you, I need to know what you want from me and help me to build this relationship because a relationship with God doesn't stop when we leave out of these doors. Okay. You know? um, the truth of the matter is we learn in church, but we grow outside of church. Okay. Um, when you, uh, you need a bill met, and you, your money does not match, that's growth. Right. But you learn the principles of what to do while you're in happens outside of church. Um, keeping your temper outside of church. Uh, when someone cuts you off on the road and you would have been on time for work. <laughs> These are times that God's given us to grow. Um, looking at what you would have said before versus what you say now. You say, wow, if nobody else has heard me, I'm going to tap myself on the back because uh, me two years ago would have responded differently to that. And this is my experience that I have with God. Mark 2, verses 14 through 17. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And it happened that he was reclining at the table in his house, and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many of them, and they were following him. But the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors. They said to his disciples, Why is he eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. 
I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. It's amazing that the only people that did not love Jesus was the religious people. Uh, they, they hated his honesty. They hated his strength and his anointing. They hated his patience with people. Jesus was extremely patient with people. And, and, and it's amazing. I think Minister Kedak and I were talking about this today. It's amazing how we can be raised in Christ and now all of a sudden we're too anointed to be around other people. It's too annoying. Jesus actually hung out with prostitutes, with drunks, you know, with a purpose because he had a goal of bringing them into the kingdom of God. But he didn't tell them to go get straight first before I could come around you. He didn't say you were too smelly. You go fix yourself up and I, I come around you. He, he wanted them the way that they were. He weren't trying to make them who they weren't. He was loving them exactly where they were. Okay? Yeah, in their present state, which is our mission, you know, um, we accept people in their present state. We nurture them in their present state. We have a vision, but our mission is to accept people right where they are. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and it's important that in our, 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 our mission statement and our vision, or our, rather our vision is up there, but on your um, your bulletins inside, you have our mission statement as well. It's good to know what it is. It's good to know what you're a part of. Um, because if we can love people right where they are, with the purpose of taking them into the spirit realm, we try to, how's the saying go, we try to um, eat the fish before we catch it, or how, clean it before you, clean it before you catch it. There you go. And, and we need to be patient with, with each other. Let people come to, to church. Leave them alone. Let them worship God in their present state. The Holy Spirit, oh, let me let you talk about it. Uh, basically just saying, let the Holy Spirit do the glory. Whether it be spiritual, whether it be natural, whether it be financial, whatever status that someone is in, pray for someone else. If you don't have anything good to say, try to hold back and not say anything at all. Be led by the Spirit of God. Don't be led by your feelings. Because what you feel today, you may not feel tomorrow. Right. And what you feel this morning, most of the time we don't feel by the time we go to bed. You wake up in the morning, you're bright and cheery. By the time you lay down, you're exhausted. So we don't have the right to govern someone's soul over how we feel. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. And if we're going to be sisters and brothers in Christ, we need to learn how to cover each other. And if you don't know how, pray. And if you don't know what to pray, say, Lord, help me and teach me how to pray for my sister or brother because you don't always know. Don't judge a book by a cover because you don't know the story. And if you don't get time to take the time to know someone, then you have no right to tell the story because you don't know it. It's amazing to me before we move on how people want you to live your life based on their way. Uh, they'll tell you. You're trying to find out what's best for you and what's best for your family. They'll tell you how you should live your life, but they want you to do it the way they want it to be done. So here it is. You're fighting to be the best that you can be in, in every area of life, but they can't accept that you're trying to find your way. They want you to live your life, but you need to live it my way. And the moment you don't live it my way, I'm no longer your friend. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would add to that that one of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. And if you realize that you can only control yourself, you won't spend time trying to control someone else. Because it's not a fruit of the Spirit. And you want to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Never allow church people's expectation for your family to supersede the unconditional love that you have for them, even with their flaws. So we, we recognize all, all, all of our families, we have flaws. There's no family that will come through this church without flaws. Amen. 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 Let's free each other up. We, we, uh, I'll, I'll start off first. Uh, first Lady and I and our family, we have flaws. Now, do we have any more for anyone else? All right. All right. Amen. This, Amen. When, when we get real like this, the power of God comes in because one of the things that I read about the disciples, it said they met daily. They broke bread. They talked. And when you meet daily and you break bread and you talk, you let your guards down. You become more comfortable. 
when you don't spend time together, you wonder how much I can share. So sometimes we put little tests out here and say, you know, when I was in the third grade, I ate a piece of cake. Let's see if that comes back. If it don't come back from no one, I can trust you a little more, I can tell you a little more. Just throw something out there. You know, we're building relationships with one another. And anyone wondering, I didn't steal the cake. <laughs> All right, Psalms chapter 127. Chapter 137, verses 3 through 5. I'm sorry, 127, correction. Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. I repeat, behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Amen. Now, um, children are a blessing from the Lord. And, uh, a man that finds the wife finds favor from the Lord. And we have scriptures that support family is extremely important. In fact, it mentions um, Eve coming out of Adam's rib first. And it speaks about the children. Then it speaks about building the foundation of the work of the Lord. God wants family to be respected and supported. And it's amazing how sometimes we can come into a church and the expectations of the church supersedes what God gave us first, which is the family. Are you all with me? Yeah. As a pastor, I've never put expectation on my wife or children to be someone they're not. Okay? Um, if uh, being the first lady means this for one pastor, then God bless you. I'm not going to ask her to copy uh, another pastor's first lady because that's not necessarily the model. Once again, you can only be happy when you're your best. Being who you are. Just be who you are. God recognizes you when you are who you are. My children haven't always done everything that I wanted them to do, but guess what? I didn't do everything my parents wanted me to do. Amen. Right? So I, I just ask them, come to, come to church, love God, love his people. Find your way. Along the way, you may make some decisions that I'm not necessarily so proud of. But once again, I made some decisions that my parents weren't so proud of. We have to begin to raise that bar off of each other. Come here and be free. Many people have ex excommunicated their children away from the church because things have been done that didn't fit the criteria of the church. Okay, yeah, you, sh you should hold them accountable and talk the truth, but I don't have to come before the church and try to embarrass them to please you. Amen. Right? Amen. You don't have to come before the church and try to say, I really disciplined my child. Look how hurt they are so I can be accepted by you. No, we do need to have the one-on-one -on -one talks. Don't get me wrong. We need to share what the scripture says. But then we also need to grant them grace so they can begin to grow and not forget where we've come from. You know, I, I was hearing a preacher one time, he said something that was pretty awful to me. He said that he had a, uh, an evangelist in his church, a woman evangelist. She was 32 years old, and um, she had gotten married, and her husband was a deacon. So, you know, they're saved, they're walking with the Lord now. Um, the 32-year-old, uh, the mother, 32 years old, um, uh, had a daughter. And the daughter got pregnant at 16 years old. The mother, who's now an evangelist, came down hard on the daughter, who now has become pregnant. Are you all following? Mm -hmm. um, so she basically excommunicated the daughter because now she's an evangelist. And look at the reproach that would come upon me as a preacher. Okay, let's not forget about the family and the importance of family, even when you need to correct. So the pastor asked a question. He says, how old are you? And the evangelist said, 32 years old. So he says, okay, good, very good. And how old did you say your daughter was? They got pregnant. She said, 16. I'm going to pause for a minute. Y'all excuse me. 
but we need to appreciate what each person can do. That, that, that's the purpose of me trying to bring out the gift concept, is that my oldest son is very artistic. He's um, customized sneakers, he's very gifted. Um, my middle son, no, no, my baby boy, he has some of the skill, but it's not at the level in which his brother does it as far as the interest. But we don't, you know, encourage them to compete with each other. Every time we see them, they're bouncing off each other. They're giving each other ideas. Um, they're encouraging one another. And, you know, make sure that your children don't have to compete for your love. You know, if you can, make sure there's no favoritism among you. Because the enemy tries to use that to divide your family. Be aware of the traps of the adversary. Study your family. Study your family. Um, when Pastor was speaking, I wrote down authority. Know your authority. Ask God to teach you how to use your authority. Don't let your authority go to your neighbor's house if you don't have your own house together. And if they don't welcome you in their house, don't go to their house and try to use your authority. definition of a hypocrite is not one who struggles, but whether one who raises the bar for you and lowers it for themselves. And I'm going to push on, but the scripture is Romans chapter 2, verses 21. For the sake of time, we're going to move forward, but I would love for you to look at that. So the definition of a hypocrite is not one who struggles, because we all struggle. But the hypocrite comes when I'm struggling and I hold you accountable. I raise the bar for you. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be doing better. You should be greater than that. And then I, I turn around and I do the same thing and hide it from you. <laughs> That's a hypocrite. All right. All right. Uh, number five. Build the families and the families will build the church. Yeah. I, I don't wish to build an image of a family. Uh, I want God to strengthen each family member that we have and be patient with one another because growth comes in different stages yes. as, as First Lady mentioned. And we, we ought to be patient with one another and build each other up, build your family up, take one-on-one -on -one time with them to find out their interests. If it's nothing but a walk, to talk to them, to find out because we don't always know what's in the mind of the children. When you separate them, they may share some things that they would not share if you have more than one a child is worth speaking right. to. Making withdrawals and deposits. Um, a relationship, whether it be marriage or whether it be a parenting a child, a relationship is like a bank account. Okay? Um, you have to make some deposits. Okay? Deposits could be kind words. Uh, you know, it could be the way that you uh, spend time, um, things you've said. Those are deposits. Because just as sure as you're making those deposits, you're going to need to make a withdrawal on okay? it, it. It's the same thing in the natural. When you go to the bank, you deposit it, and those bills say, put it back out. <laughs> so it's, it's the same thing in, in the, the spirit realm uh, when we deal with one another. So if you've been speaking kind words to your spouse or your children, there may come a time that you drop the ball, and they may grant you grace. That's a withdrawal. Because they can say, you know what, maybe mommy or dad's having a rough day today. Because I always think about all the things that they do to build me up. All right, so I grant you grace. But if all you're doing is making withdrawals all the time, it's constantly taking, 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 you're going to have a negative balance. Okay? Um, Proverbs 31, please, um, verses 11 through 24. If you could read that, please. Proverbs. 31. Now, Proverbs 31 is a, um, it's not a real woman, okay? A lot of, a lot of times uh, people have raised the bar to believe, man, I just can't do that. It wasn't necessarily meant for you to do. It, it was meant to glean from as an example. So maybe you cover five of the areas and you're missing four. You may never get those four, but you should strive. We should strive as people to become better. 
All right? So don't don't walk away depressed and discouraged if you can't find yourself doing all this. It's an example. Okay? Because if you were to go back um, to Proverbs. I believe this verse one, but it's a King James. I believe it says, "Who can find?" It's a question. Uh, it doesn't say it from the Bible that the identified Bible, but verses eleven through twenty-four. Please. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax, and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant, merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night, and gives food to her household. <laughs> and portions to her maiden. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, and she stretches out her hand to the needy. Open door mission. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with seven. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gate. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen and garments and sells them, and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Yeah, so, when, when, you, when you give to one another, when you support one another, you remember those times when someone needs to go out and minister to someone else. But if there was a deficit, then I need you to meet first. But after you've given out to others, it's okay for you to give out to others. If once you've given home, it's okay for you to give out to others. Right? Because this is the trick of the enemy. We love God and we want to help people, but then you can cause either your spouse or your children or whatever to say, why are you always put the church people before me? Why you don't care about me? Amen. All your time is spent in church. You don't love me. It's things like that. But once you've made those deposits in your own home, okay, when you're called upon to do something for the Lord, there's a healthy balance. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's the concept of deposits and withdrawal. I love this one. Are you of the church of today and not tomorrow? Oftentimes we hear people say, uh, our youth are the church of tomorrow. But what if God wants to do something today? Amen. Will we get in his way? Uh, King, um, I believe it's in uh, 2 Kings chapter 22, there was a king, jo Josiah I believe it was, reigned at 8 years old. He was the king at 8 Y'all hear me? Eight years old, he was a king. And what if he had a religious mindset to say, no, we can't listen to the kids. We don't know what they're talking about. God, God said, unless we become like these little children, we shall not hear the kingdom of God. What does that mean? They argue and they forgive real quick. They, they don't hold grudges. They, they play. Um, they're always thinking about my buddy. And we as parents, we try to run and stop them. You know, they argue and then we, we try to run and stop them. And they say, that's my friend, what you doing? <laughs> right? God said, pick up that concept. Don't hold on to stuff. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Have faith. And, and my, mommy and daddy could be down to their last. They'd be like, what are we about to eat for dinner? If you're looking at them like, I don't know what you think. They say, you're going to put something on that plate. Uh, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Right? God says, have that type of faith that I'm going to take care of you. Amen? We have to believe that God is going to take care of us. This is the mindset of children, and the Lord instructed us to become like that. So, with that understanding, how can we say that they're the church of tomorrow? 
They have their pulse on the world today. Right? I want to show you a scripture. Acts chapter 2. One scripture. Acts chapter 2. Thank God for this moment. We don't get many opportunities to do this. And also, while you're turning to Acts chapter 2, um, we're going to hold a new members course um, sometime in April, hopefully, to be able to bring everyone on one accord to understand even uh, better what we believe in. You have to take time to do that. Acts chapter 2. Uh, let's look at verse 6. Can you read verse And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. Are we speaking the language of the youth? Do we understand their language? Do we understand how they flow? Could God actually be preparing us for a great move that we've never witnessed through the youth? Or will we be so set in our ways that we miss a move of God because it doesn't look right. You know, usually when I'm preaching, the kids come up to the pulpit. Some of them want me to pick them up. Some of them pull on my coat. Um, lay down. Could it be that God is calling them? I don't know. It is so different from how church is usually done. I get it. But what if that's God calling them and I get in the way? What if? Suffer the little children to come unto me, is what Jesus said. What? I, who was it that, um, what did say? Well, there were two occasions um, recently when the pastor was ministering. Uh, Jasmine, right. can you tell me how old Jehazanite Jeh- 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 and uh, Jehazanite are? Jehazanite is five and Jehazanite is three. Okay, well, both of her girls on different occasions, one actually came and laid an offering at Pastor's feet. Um, I don't know if you guys were witness to that. I don't know if that was when he just started to mark the moment, but she just did it spontaneously. In the middle of service, she came and laid the offering next to his feet. And that's the baby. Now, there was another occasion in which Pastor was ministering, and I usually can tell, because we're two shall become one, that when he starts to lose his breath or when he starts to get dry, but the baby came to me and told me, Pastor needs a drink. Pastor needs some water. Pastor needs it right now. So I asked her to give me like two seconds so I could open the bottle and pour it in the cup, and she needed to bring a glass of water to the pot. And I thank God because she heard from the Lord. And when that time of refreshing came, he was able to finish that sermon with power and anointing. So that's actually confirmation of what Pastor just said. So we never know. We, we don't know. And we have to be open to God, not always church experiences. And I'm not knocking church experiences because some of them have been great. But we have to be ready to flow with God, to grow with them. At any time we've ever grown, God has always challenged us to do something different. No matter what the relationship is. Any time it was time to grow, God said, I want you to do this. And we said, I never did that before. This works. I might as well keep trying this. God said, I didn't ask you to do that. I'm taking you higher, and I need to stretch you. It's going to be uncomfortable, but every time that we obeyed him, we looked back and saw what he he had done, and it has been so great in our lives. It was uncomfortable, but it was great eventually. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, This is the last thing I like to uh, talk about then we'll transition let the same person you are at home come to church it, it should be and I don't I don't say that in a negative manner I'm not saying that um, it should be a continuation they've gotten used to you being silly at home be silly at church don't don't yeah if you kiss at home kiss in the church as husband and wife there you go there you go 
<laughs> don't, don't, don't have someone like, who is this? <laughs> we don't do this at home. Right? So if, if you're used to that at home, don't become someone different in the church. The spirit flows. The spirit says, I recognize that. Let me anoint that. Let me my anointing falls on that. I recognize you. You do that at home. Now, Adam, where are you? Who are you? Right? So when there's a continuation, um, it doesn't mislead us. Because we're, we're used to this. My, my grandson comes um, in my house at home and beat me up. He, he, don't be surprised if he comes beat me up here. <laughs> He's used to that. How, how can I now become a different person? Right. right? When I come for people, he beat me up at home. He beat me up at church. He didn't see me as Papa. Put the microphone down. What are you doing? It's time to fight. Right? So God uses that, though, to place us in uncomfortable situations to allow us to be the real us. Why, why do we change? Let it be a continuation. If you, if you are one that crack jokes and you're funny at home, don't come here and get serious and deep. If you are serious and deep, there's nothing wrong with that. At home, come here and be serious and deep. Don't try to crack jokes because people are going to say, that, that, that don't seem real. You got all your jokes written down. At this point, say this. No, it's not you. Flow. And, and when we realize who we are in God, God will anoint us and the power of God will flow because we're not trying to be someone that God didn't create us to be. God always anoints who he recognizes. Okay? So our, our slogan here. Um, is uh, so redeeming model. I'm sorry. Um, a model is uh, so redeeming ministries where the soul is the real you, and the real you belongs to your Creator. God created you. He's looking for the real us. So that's why I don't tell everyone scream because some people don't scream. When you worship God, you may be just sitting down, just thinking about His goodness, and a tear roll down your eyes. You connected with God. Some people may get up and tear the church up. Go at it, brother. Sister. Go ahead and tear it up. Some, 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 just help me put it back together. But, uh, <laughs> some, some people do things differently. And when we try to make people cookie cutters, you can't be as happy as you'll be. Let a continuation of what you do at home come into the church. If you're, you, you do things a certain way and, and your, your family members recognize you at home, Guess what? When you come to church, they're going to recognize you. Right. When they see you crying at home, worshiping God, they're going to say, oh, mommy or daddy usually does that. Yeah. But but you can't be um, not expressing yourself like that at home and then only do it at church and think that they'll receive us. Right. That'll be a continuation. Because they'll see it done at home and they'll see it done at church. They'll join you eventually at home and they'll join you at church because God's looking for the real us. Amen? Yeah. Let's give the Lord a hand for you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, to married couples, we have a survey that you would like, uh, a, a, a premarital, marital survey that we would love for you to look at. We plan to own um, for soon. And we, we have some topics that we would love for you to mark what's most important to you that we would cover. So, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and, and you're in the back. And, and um, I'm sure the usher will assist if you raise your hand um, um, for that. But whether you are thinking about marriage or whether you want a refresher, we have some material that I, I strongly believe will be a blessing to all of us because we are a community, all right? No marriage stands by itself. The enemy has come to destroy every marriage. Everybody thinking about marriage, the enemy will constantly come to fight that, to stop that, because he knows, listen, I'd rather God wants me to do than to live a life of sin and not be pleasing God. Okay? Amen. I'd rather go through and know that God is pleased that I am going through with him than to go on my own and do what I want to do. All right.